All right, so when we crack open the shell, this is what we're looking with. Looking at right out of the box. This can actually be left intact, it doesn't have to be shaved out because the 2S LiPo will fit within this area right here. All right, so the key component here for these uh, these Star Wars Nerf Blasters is this little card right here. You're going to see that we have the negative lead here, the positive lead feeds into this thermistor board, which regulates the amount of voltage going in there. Uh, it can be removed entirely. You can safely feed this board here with a 2S LiPo at about 8.4 volts without blowing these capacitors. If you try this with a 3S at 11.4, which will be volted up to about 12.4 volts, you will smell smoke and eventually you will see these capacitors pop. So unless we're going to add additional resistance here and here, do not run this blaster off of a 3S LiPo. This board here is what regulates the amount of voltage going to the flywheel motors. And you can see that the same board is also providing resistance for the UV LEDs that are used for the glow strike function. So you can reuse this board here to provide the proper resistance for these, even off of the uh, 8 4 volts of a 2S LiPo. But these connections here will need to be severed, then they'll need to be bridged, which you're just going to have a simple wire connecting these two leads together, these pads together. And uh, whatever motors you want to use in here, uh, 130 stock will fit. If you want to do 180 motors, then you're going to have to do some shell cutting and it's going to modify the profile of the blaster, which is one of the main reasons for using these Star Wars blasters in the first place. All right, now if we continue looking off of the uh, core, the brain, if you will, of the uh, current Star Wars blasters, starting with this sound card here, you can see that we have this ribbon connector here, uh, four negatives and one positive lead, and this is what is powering the Nope. the IR LED. So you want to leave all this intact so you get that cool scrolling effect and of course um, without this you're not going to get the sound effects either. Uh, this is a half watt speaker which is kind of junk but if you try and upgrade it with say a 1 watt or 1.5 or even a 2 watt speaker since this card does not drive the circuit with enough power you will not be taking advantage of that upgraded speaker. So unless if you do that there is no need to replace this. I've actually tried this with a 1.5 uh, watt speaker and uh, the sound was actually less than this, this tinny little speaker here. So without that modification, don't, don't even bother. Now alternately, and this will require a little bit of shell modification, what you can do is create a resonance chamber. This is an old uh, lightsaber building trick. You can have something like this going on to the front of the speaker and that will create enough of resonance to increase the sound slightly, but as you can see, that's not going to fit within the stock mount. So again, more modifications required. Uh, as far as the peak amount of volume that you're going to be able to get from the circuit, uh, about as loud as a aftermarket lightsaber. Maybe about... that loud. But it's mostly just kind of fun because there is an interesting dovetailing of uh, technology between uh, even the, the lightsabers that you can get off the shelf and uh, the Nerf blasters. And all of the principles that apply to you know, wiring cards for sound and lights that you find in the lightsabers also applies to these current blasters. Alright, so continuing on with our upgrade, a lot of this wiring is actually going to be left intact. Um, particularly the resistor board, these UV LEDs, most of the wiring coming off the sound card here. What is going to be replaced are some of these mechanical electronic locks and switches. This needs to be upgraded with a higher amperage switch, or you can wire in a MOSFET, and that is what is going to be activating the motors here. All right, so we're going to cut these leads here, make sure that we leave enough pad so you can't damage it. You need to leave the pad intact so that you can wire in a bridge between these terminals and that will allow the voltage to circulate through the circuit. What we are going to be doing, however, is these leads here 
are going to be replaced with uh, an XT60 connector. So the battery is going to be powering both the flywheels here, which are going to be connected to the micro switch, high amperage micro switch here. And these leads here are still going to be feeding off of the battery, but they are working on semi-independent circuits. Same battery source, same power source, but this is going to be using uh, lower amperage than what is going to be fed to the flywheel motors. Moving on to the flywheel activation switch. You can tell that this thing has motor braking because of the quick spool down time. So when we pop this off we can see in fact that there are not two but three leads coming off of this switch here. So you're going to want to retain that so you can keep that uh, nice little motor braking function. But this wiring is going to be replaced with some uh, heavier gauge silicone. All right, what we also will be removing is the jam door. The jam door latch here, which has to be in the closed position in order to complete the circuit. So we're going to drop that out because it's uh, not really necessary. We could leave the switch in, rewire it with a uh, voltmeter, so that's always an option. Maybe we'll do that because, to be honest, this little switch here doesn't really do much to interfere with the operation, the smooth operation, I should say, of the blaster. So this right here is a good candidate for your voltmeter activator. So when it opens, you're going to want to wire it so that it will give you a voltmeter reading. And when you close it, it'll turn the voltmeter off. And as for where you can mount it, plenty of spaces. So that's kind of going to be an aesthetic and a functional decision for the person who does that. What we will be removing, however, is this switch here, which is the magazine, the magazine lock. Because there's uh, no, no real reason to have that in there, and plus that slightly interferes with the smooth operation of the blaster. This block here, um, well, you don't want to be pushing the trigger to load darts when uh, the flywheels aren't running, because all it's going to do is cause a jam to the blaster. We're going to run some tests to see how smoothly we can get that to function. Now, I've done this in a strife where I've let the trigger, it's the same switch, I've left that intact so it won't pull unless it just is activated. But uh, again, some of that is going to be a personal feel. If you're going to switch this to a electronically activated blaster, Like we have here, then that is no longer an issue. Having the jam in there, having the, the uh, jam prevention doesn't matter because the only thing that the trigger is going to be doing at that point is activating the micro switch. So at that point, not only does the trigger block become redundant, but uh, it, it would serve no, no purpose whatsoever. All right, and the last switch that we have in here that we are going to be leaving in intact is this one right here which is activated by the trigger moving back and forth. So there's a little tab here that is going to push down on the button as it slash pushes by. And that's what activates that. So this is simply the activation circuit for the sound card and the LED array. So we're going to leave this wiring intact. This doesn't have to be uh, high amperage. Uh, it doesn't need to be high voltage. Six volts is fine to power this circuit. This splitter here, um, some of these will be left intact, and possibly the only one that's going to be bypassed is the three wires that are going to be going from the flywheel activation to the flywheels itself, which are going to trace to the battery. And it's going to skip over the sound card, and that is what's going to give us the direct amperage from the battery pack straight to the flywheels. All right, so popping off the magazine lock cover, we are going to see that it is a multifunctional part. So not only is a guide for the trigger bar, it is also retaining the that spring right there is for the mag release, and that in turn goes here, 
which is what activates. So all that needs to be left intact. This can go. That spring can be reused for something else. And this switch right here will have to be bypassed. <laughs> 